This is part 164 of ASP.NET tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss displaying organization employee chart using tree view control. This is continuation to part 163. So please watch part 163 from the ASP.NET tutorial before proceeding with this video. We'll be using this employee table in this demo. First, let's understand this data. For Sam, Pam and Mike, manager is number one, that is David. For John and Tara, manager is number two, that is Sam. For Todd, manager is number four, that's Mike. If you look at the tree view control on the right hand side, we have Sam, Pam and Mike displayed under David, John and Tara under Sam, Todd under Mike. The interesting thing here is that there's a checkbox displayed next to every employee within the tree view control. Once we click this button, we want all the selected employee names along with their IDs to be displayed in the list box. Let's see how to implement this. The first step here is to create this table. In the interest of time, I have already created this table. Here is the SQL script to create and populate it with some sample data. I'll have the script available on my blog in case you need it. I also have implemented the stored procedure SP get employees, which is very straightforward. All the stored procedure is doing is returning ID name and manager ID columns from TBL employee table. We'll be modifying the tree view control that we implemented in the previous session so that we don't have to write the same code again. So at the moment, this tree view control is bound to the data that is returned by this stored procedure. So that's why the tree view control looks like this. But instead, we want this tree view control to be bound to the data that is going to be returned by this stored procedure. So let's copy this stored procedure name and paste it right here. So within the data set now, we have employee data. And we need to add the relationships as well. So the relationship name is child Rose. So the parent column is going to be ID column. So within this table, we have that ID column. But the child column is going to be manager ID column. So let's copy the name of the column, manager ID and change it here. Similarly, we need to change the column name here as well. So here we are creating the parent tree node object. We are setting the text. So where are we going to get the text for the tree node object? We are going to get it from the name column. So we need to change the column name here to name. And we don't want to have navigate URL for the tree node object. Instead, we are going to set the value property. And we want to set the value as the ID of the employee. Because remember, our requirement is to display the ID also along with the employee name. So for the tree view node object, we are setting the value property. So value is going to be from the ID column. OK. And then we have this recursive function here, get child rows. And to that function, we are passing the level one data row, that is the parent root node um, row, and then the parent tree node object. We discussed this recursive function in our previous video session. And what we are doing here, we are basically looping through each child row and we are building the child tree node object and we are again setting the text and navigate URL but we don't want navigate URL instead we want value property and here the name of the column is going to be name and we are going to get the ID I mean the value for the child tree node from ID column and then we are adding that child tree node to the passed in tree node object and we are again checking if the child row has got any other child rows. And if that is the case, we are recursively calling that function. All right. So at this point, if we go ahead and run this, the data from the employee table should be bound to the tree view control. Look at that. So we have the employees displayed as expected. So under David, we have Sam, Pam, and Mike. Under Sam, we have John and Tara. Under Mike, we have Todd. OK, but we need a checkbox control next to every employee. So how are we going to get that? It's very simple. All you need to do is there is an attribute called show checkboxes. And we need to set it to all so that it's 
going to display a checkbox next to every employee. So with this change, let's run it once more. And look at that, we get checkboxes. Now let's go ahead and design our web form so that it looks like this. At the moment, we only have a tree view control, but let's also include a button and a list box. So let's include a table here. And inside this table, let's have a table row. Let's have a TD. And within this TD, we're going to have this tree view control. So let's cut that from there and then paste it within this TD. And for this TD, let's set a border. So style equals border colon one pixel solid black. Let's include another TD. And within this TD, we are going to have a button control. So let's drag and drop a button control and let's set the text as two angle brackets. And then let's have another TD. And then we need a list box here. So let's drag and drop a list box. And for this list box, let's set height and width. Let's set a height to maybe 145 and width to 100. So let's flip this to the design mode and see if we get the design that we expect. All right, so we have the design there. So let's double click on this button to generate the click event handler. All right, so here we're going to write code to retrieve the selected items from the tree view control. So for that, I'm going to write a recursive function private void and let's call this get selected tree nodes and to this function we're going to pass the parent tree node object so the type is going to be tree node and let's call it parent tree node so if the passed in parent tree node is checked meaning if somebody has selected that, then this checked property of the tree node object is going to return true. If that is the case, then what we need to do, we need to add the text and ID value of that tree node object to the list box. So list box one dot items dot add. So we need the text from the parent node. So parent node dot text and we want a dash and then the ID. So parent tree node, how are we going to get the ID? Use the value property of the tree node object. Because if you remember, in our code, we are setting the text and value properties of the tree node object. All right. Now, if the passed in parent tree node has got children, then we need to check if the children of that tree node are selected as well. So if parent tree node dot child nodes dot count, if that is greater than zero, then we know the passed in tree node object has got children. In that case, we are going to loop through each child tree node within the parent tree node and then call this function recursively. So for each tree node, let's call it child tree node in parent tree node dot child nodes. All we are going to do here is call this function, get selected tree nodes, and we are going to pass child tree node object. Now we are going to invoke this function within the button click event handler and we need to pass the parent tree node. So we are going to pass the root tree node which is present at index position 0. So tree view one dot nodes of 0 is going to pass you know the root tree node and then this function is going to recursively check every tree node. If that node is selected then it's going to add that node's text and value to the list box. And if it has got children, it's going to loop through each children 
uh, each child and then call this function again. All right. So with these changes, let's run this and see if it works as expected. Okay, so we have the list box with checkboxes. Let's select David, John, Tara, and Mike. Look at that. We got David, John, Tara, and Mike, and their respective IDs. And if we select Pam and Sam, and let's add them. Look at that. It's adding a lot of people. That's basically because um, it's retaining the old values within the list box. In order to get rid of the old items within the list box, when we click the button, let's clear the items. So list box one dot items dot clear. All right, let's run it once more. So let's select John and Tara. So we get them. Let's also select David, Sam, Pam. Select them. Look at that. Now we only have the selected employees. All right. That's it for today. Thanks for listening. Have a great day.